Hi there, it's Stephen here at iPhotography. I hope you're well. Thanks so much for coming along to watch this video. Today, basically, it's this is kind of kind of quite a, a fun little indoor experiment, let's say. I've got these miniature figures that I got online, and I think they're gonna be a really, really good tool to kind of play around with to create indoor scenes on a very small and miniature level. If you're wanting to kind of practice your macro photography, for example, or if you're just not able to get outside for a while, then these can be a really good, useful little prop. To use in a range of scenarios. So I've got my camera, I've got a, a macro lens on here, but you could try this out with any camera really. You could try even like with a, a camera phone or something like that. It's not gonna be particularly difficult necessarily to kind of set up. Things like detail and sharpness, etc., are probably gonna be a much more important factor in getting these shots right. But in terms of the actual um, miniature figures themselves, you can get them from a range of places. Now these ones are made specifically by Presa. And a Presa that do a lot of figures and ornaments and props for miniature railways. So this is maybe where you've seen possibly kind of figures like this before. And they make them in such a wide array of different actions, different professions. I've actually got a little series of six photographers here, which are quite cool. And I've used these indoor before. I've used them outdoor um, as well. So it's not just a case that you can only kind of use them um, at home. You know. But effectively, I'm gonna kind of set up a little scenario kind of at the front here and just talk through camera settings most importantly talk through focus because with working with something so small being able to kind of see as much detail as you possibly can um, and making sure the shot is sharp is really really crucial now you say you can get these online these ones made by preset but you can get you can get other ones made by other companies um, whether you go on Amazon whether you go on uh, eBay I'm sure there's tons of retailers that you can find online they're not going to be that specific and, and too niche if you know what you're looking for but you may may even have um, suitable figures at home already. If you're into Lego, if you've got kids and they've got Lego at home, you could basically adapt the exact same thing that we're gonna do here into using Lego. So I'm just gonna kind of set up a little shot here. I'll talk you through what I'm doing and most importantly, I'll talk through the camera settings. So let's get started. Okay, so I'm pretty much set up to some degree, or at least I've got my lighting in place anyway. I just want to go through with you exactly what I've set up here, because these are two little LED ring lights. They're designed specifically for small scale projects. They're absolutely great for little indoor projects like this. I mean, you can use them on a whole range of things, whether it's product photography or, or flat lays, etc. But they are very, very useful, very flexible. They come with their own little mini tripod, which you can detach. Then it has a little brace on the back, so you can then also change the, uh, ex not, not so much the extension of the legs, but the angle of the legs. Uh, but then it's also mounted onto a ball joint, so you can move the light around. It just gives you a bit more flexibility as to whether you want to point it straight down, and you can kind of shoot through the hole. You can bring it up a little bit higher, but it does give you a lot of flexibility. There will also be versions that will give you colored lighting as well. There'll be like an RGB function. This one is just white light on its own, but that's absolutely fine for what I want to use it for here. So let's just tie that back in place. Um, I've got my, uh, my little figures here. Let me just bring things around. The tricky thing with them is getting them to stay standing still because they are specifically or really designed for working in these little Hornby railways and things like that you may have seen. So a lot of the time they're actually pushed into a surface, a soft surface, and it just helps them stay standing still. Obviously not got that here, we're not using it in that kind of context, but obviously if you're outdoors, I haven't used it before where you kind of push them into soft wood, into like moss up on tree bark and things like that. Loads of different ways you can do it. Indoors on a hard surface like this, you may just have to resort to being a little bit clever somewhat with your trickery. Depends how good you are with your editing, but you could basically put a little bit of blue tack, white tack on the bottom of their feet, um, or even get some sellotape and just actually double side that and stick them down. Because you then will need to go through the editing and just actually remove those if you're gonna do it that way. Another way that I've got is gonna sound really weird. Um, but it kind of is an extension of shooting from outside where you're actually pushing the, the miniature figures into something here. I've got a biscuit and I, I was always going to intend to use this anyway um, as like the subject for what we're shooting here. So it's just like the principle of the idea. 
It's going to have all the little photographers gathered around photographing what's going to look like this ginormous biscuit. Um, but the surface of it is absolutely great to be able to push our figures into. So it's really, really soft, dead simple and plain. So all I would need to do effectively is position it, grab whichever couple of figures I want, and then it's just a case of pushing them in to the surface. So you want to actually kind of position them obviously where they're going to look good, where they look like they're actually intending some action. You may need to give it a little bit of firm force. They're fairly, fairly robust to some degree. Obviously, you're not going to have to try and kind of push them too tightly. And then once they're in position, you then maybe just have to re-angle it just so they're looking a little bit more upright. Now, again, depending upon the object that you're using to kind of base your shot around, you could possibly have them kind of towards the end. You could have them kind of in front. You just want to make sure that they're not going to fall in the middle of your shot. They don't look too wonky and they don't look unnatural either. Obviously, with these ones being little photographers, you can dot them around all over the place here as if they're all looking to be taking pictures of the big biscuit. Um, but it depends on what you're actually, we'll see, that's how easy it is for them to fall over. It just depends really upon what you're using to actually shoot with, what, what's the context of it. But food photography is actually kind of great to mix up a little bit here um, with the miniature figures because it's all about kind of creating a sense of scale and it doesn't have to necessarily be a big thing you know i've got a relatively kind of you know medium sized bit of food but obviously the miniature figures make everything look even bigger so i'm just going to carry on i'm just going to try and place a few more into position and then i say we'll just take some shots okay right i quite like that setup at the minute so i've just got kind of four four little photographers all set um, then I'm going to need to bring my lighting into play here. Let me just move the camera out of the way. So I'll just need to adjust the lighting and I want to try and balance it so I'm not getting any harsh shadows. I'm going to bring it a little bit more around the front and people will probably end up having two lights kind of counterbalancing each other. So I'll bring this other one around here, just looking at where the shadows are falling, making sure as best as I can each of the individual figures are illuminated. So I think about there is good and I may just do the same on the other one here spin that tripod around and just tilt it down because then we've got this nice intense area of lighting which means we can use a slightly smaller aperture and it just pushes a bit more darkness into the background there now in terms of the actual camera camera settings here I'm going to use a macro lens but as I said before if you've not got one, don't worry, just use what you've got. You can use a phone, whichever. It's ultimately trying about getting as close in as you can. Obviously, different lenses will have different minimal focal distance. Um, and then just trying to make sure that one portion of the image, at least, is crisp and clear. Now, in this instance, I've got figures down the front, one at the side. But given that I've got two on the top here, I think because they're elevated at the, tops, uh, the top line here, they're probably going to be the best point to use for my focus, really. So possibly the guy in blue, with him being a little bit brighter, I'm going to use him as my focus point. Now, if you've got a tripod, obviously that's going to be really, really helpful, but I've not got one here in this situation, but it's fine, because I think otherwise you can either use just steady hands, because we don't particularly need a really slow shutter speed. Nothing's really moving. Um, so otherwise we could just place it on the table if you're shooting in a similar way to me. So in this instance, I'm actually going to just put the camera down onto the table. Then what we're set up at here, um, so let's lower this ISO. We don't need it to be so fast, so high. So we're at 125th um, in terms of ISO, 125, sorry. Uh, shutter speed 160th and F4 as our aperture. So as we look at our histogram, everything's fine. Nothing clipping top end or bottom end or anything like that. I'm gonna just move in a little bit tighter. Right, and in terms of my focus, currently it's just actually Highlighting the biscuit is like the main focus point, which is absolutely fine. So maybe what we'll do is actually just try that to begin with. Now, I may just make a slight adjustment before I do, because I can see one of my little figures start to fall over. I put them at the front, and I just had to nudge them a little bit closer. So this is where it can get very, very annoying, <laughs> I will say. But it's very satisfying once you get the shots that you want. Okay, so... He stood upright, so whilst we're in the good position, I'm just going to go back to where we were, get the camera down on the table, 
focus right on the biscuit here. Make sure our framing is nice and even. We've got nice straight lines on the horizon so everything is nice and level. I'm going to take the shot there. That's absolutely fine. What I can actually do now is maybe just reduce the aperture size, just bring in a little bit more depth to the shot. So making that image a little bit sharper in the foreground and the background, trying to get more of the figures sharper. Obviously it's made the image itself a little bit darker, but we can either slow the shutter speed down, we could bring up the ISO a little bit more. So it gives us the same type of exposure but we've just got a wider depth of field. So let's take that shot again. We're now at 7.1, 125 a second and 200 ISO. So they're nothing particularly slow in terms of shutter speed or, or high in terms of ISO. And that's because these lights are doing a great job for us. They're very, very powerful in close context. So now I'm just gonna move around a little bit. I'm just going to place my focus point in different spots here. So I'm actually using a focus area that's around about the center, but I'm going to change it to be a flexible spot, but just keep it in the middle again. And now I'm just going to move the camera, put it in one position here, focus on our blue figure, and then just move it across. So I've not moved the camera forwards or backwards. I'm just going to take that shot again. I'm going to come back out, try it again. Focus on our blue figure, still half pressed down on the shirt. Just recompose and take the shot again. So that's it, as long as I'm not moving inwards or outwards with the camera, the depth of field won't change. I can move left and right, that's fine to recompose. So I'm gonna do the same again and just focus on our gent in the gray on the back here. So I'm gonna just come back out a little bit more, focus, hold the focus, bring the camera down to recompose and take the shot from there. And it is as simple as that you can easily start to rearrange the placements of what you're using in terms of your main subject as, as well as obviously the actual figures themselves. It just depends upon the action as to what they're doing. Obviously being photographers here, it's great. You can almost dot them around in any place and it would work quite nicely for what they're doing. Ultimately, it is as simple as that. The challenge is making sure that you get your shot crisp and clear and sharp. And to do that, obviously making sure it's sharp and you hear that audible beep when you're taking the shot, is super important, watch out for my lights. <laughs> but to go back into your camera afterwards. I'm not being rushed here, I'm not under time constraints, my lighting's not changing, I've got time to go through the shots and have a look. So I'll just go back through them and then zoom in a little bit closer, go in with the zoom wheel and just have a look for where I intended my focus to be. Is it sharp at that point? So I'll have a look on the back of the camera. It was that gray figure that I last took a photo of and yeah, he looks as sharp as I can possibly get it. So just having a look on there, it just gives me that reassurance I have absolutely nailed the focus. But obviously we'll see it a lot bigger on the big screen. We can just hype sharpness a little bit, providing it's relatively sharp to begin with, and just gives us that nice, crisp, clear detail. So yeah, that's ultimately photographing miniature figures. It is that simple, it's that easy, it's that fun. I literally have that set in my camera bag all the time. So wherever I go, wherever I am, if I've got the opportunity, if I've got the time, if it's somewhere that I know I can actually fit them in to some sort of surface or material, whatever, I can use that in so many different scenarios. With a macro lens, possibly even with a camera phone, it's that easy. Say so focus is the absolute key. But I hope you enjoy it. Let us know if you've got any questions about it. And yeah, enjoy it.